You are listening to Amplify Your Success Podcast, episode 159. And today, let's discover the secret to picking a powerful word that's your theme for the year. So let's get started. Welcome to the Amplify Your Success Podcast. Hey, are you a thought leader, creative entrepreneur, or change maker and want to magnify your impact, boost influence while creating a financial abundance? Stay tuned for today's inspiring episode with your host, Melanie Benson. Hello there, inspired entrepreneurs and business leaders. It's your host, Melanie Benson here. And as we're dropping this episode, we are ending a decade, 2019. Did you do this too, where you kept thinking it was like you're ending 1999? (laughs) I kept saying 1999 instead of 2019. And everybody's like, Melanie. 2019. So I don't know if that was just me, but for some reason, this ending a decade, I was just catapulting back to 1999. And do you remember when it was such a big deal? Everybody was worried that, you know, we were going to lose all of our software and the world was going to come crashing down. Well, the end of this decade, I think for a lot of people is feeling um, like we're leaving behind a lot of chaos. I know a lot of people had really challenging 2019s. A lot of people felt like their their souls were ripped out. Uh, some people felt like there was a lot of clearing away. So I know 2020 is going to be very powerful as we move into this, not just a new year, but a new decade. There's so much opportunity. And one of the ways to shape that opportunity is to pick a word, pick a word that uh, keeps you focused on what you want to be more of. I like to think of picking a word as not um, what you don't want, but what you want more of. So keep that in mind as you listen to today's episode. I've brought a special guest in. This is somebody who I've been getting to know on Twitter, of all places. I know a lot of people like Twitter. Twitter's dead. No, Twitter is not dead. I make the most amazing connections on Twitter. And sometimes I know they're going to make great guests. And today is a perfect example of that, someone who really knows her stuff on Twitter, really knew how to create engagement and connection. And she uh, was talking about how to pick a word that catapults your goals. And I thought, perfect. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. We're going to be having some conversation in the Amplify Your Success community, which is absolutely free right now at AmplifyYourSuccessCommunity.com. We're going to be talking about what our words are and sharing why those are meaningful. So if you are not yet a member of this free community, pop over. Uh, We'll give you a special invitation into the Facebook group. And I'll give you a copy of my seven profit amplifiers. Now, as you're setting goals and thinking about what you want to accomplish in 2020, I really encourage you to review these seven days of I send them to you over an e-course, seven days of seven profit amplifiers, and really like look at how well you're incorporating these into the way in which you're growing your business. These are small tweaks that have a massive impact in your income and in your energy to accomplish bigger, bolder goals. So I know you're going to get a lot out of those as well. It's my gift to you when you join the Amplify Your Success community. And last thing I want to mention before we start today's episode, if you're not yet in the community, then you are missing out on my exclusive trainings. I know this month I'm going to be dropping a very exciting uh, opportunity to grow in the revenue. We're going to be covering a 90-day revenue rush blueprint And I got to tell you, this is the same technique I use with my clients who pay me, uh, you know, somewhere between $1,500 for a strategy session or up into the $25,000 for coaching. This is something you can do yourself that will make a major difference in your cash flow this year. So if you're a member of the community, you'll get an invite when we do this training. Okay. You're ready for today's episode? You ready to pick your word? Be sure to come share it in Amplify Your Success community. Let's get started. Welcome back, everybody. I am so excited for today's episode, and I can't wait to tell you how today's episode came about. We're going to be talking about achieving your massive business goals by choosing the right word of the year. Now, let me introduce my special guest, Miko Saki. 
I hope I said that right. She's the founder of Airtight Concepts, a unique business growth strategy consultant, aka secret weapon, confidant, advisor, and silent partner to her clients who are creative entrepreneurs, founders, and CEOs with the desire to build a high-functioning, profit-generating piece of beautiful machine. She also organizes a meetup group, Growth Driven Entrepreneurs Worldwide in New York City, and as a self-proclaimed queen of counterintuitive strategies, she provides effective but not so conventional strategies to boost sustainable profitability for her clients' businesses by utilizing both quantita quantitative and qualitative assessments. Now, originally from Yokohama, Japan, Maiko considers herself a New Yorker, loves ethnic foods of all kinds, and is a sucker for ultra contemporary design and exotic houseplants. And she's earned her MBA from Johnson School of Management in Cornell University and now joins me from a really fun connection she established on Twitter. So I had to throw that in because I think it's so important people know that social media connections do pay off. So welcome to Amplify Your Success. Oh, thank you for having me. And I'm so glad that you pointed out about this Twitter connection because I also hear this a lot from business owners saying, what's, you know, what's the point of being active over social media, it's too crowded and it's not that easy to establish true working relationships with people, yada, yada, yada. But truly, I found you over Twitter and that led me to listen to your podcast religiously. <laughs> and we start to connect. And uh, I want uh, everybody who's listening to know that it is absolutely possible. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if you caught my previous episode on how to pitch a podcaster, and I said, make sure that you are cultivating relationships with people on social media platforms that they're active on. Uh, this is a perfect example of how that works. Uh, and so I think it's worth revisiting where you are connecting with people and are you actually building a relationship? So thanks again for spurring that off. And again, Twitter's not dead. See, it's, it's real in real time <laughs> happening here. <laughs> yeah, I agree hundred percent. It's, you know, it seems like the driest platform for many entrepreneurs. They may prefer, say, you know, Facebook or this flashy Instagram. They're all good, don't get me wrong. But if you stick with something that you feel comfortable with and you make yourself available, anything can work, really. So don't let that stop you. Yeah, I agree. Well, we're not talking about social media today. We're talking <laughs> about your word of the year. And I was so, I'm so excited for today's conversation because I always pick a theme or a word of a year and I never really had a strategy behind it. So you started posting about it and talking about it and creating some provocative conversation on Twitter. And I started thinking like, wow. And you actually asked if, if this would be of interest to my community and I thought, what a great idea to give people a little bit of a strategy that, to pick mm. a word that actually helps them achieve their goals. And so as this episode's airing, we all know we're in a phase where lots of people are setting lots of goals, yeah. but I'm curious in your expert opinion, is goal setting enough to actually achieve these big goals we're setting for a new year? Well, as you might have guessed, the answer is no. <laughs> Let's just start from there. Well, the thing of it is this. If you really think about it, we're setting goals with things that we're not familiar with or we're not accustomed to do at all times. That's why those are goals, right? Like you set up the goals for something that you wanted to achieve but you haven't done most of the time or you haven't been able to achieve before. So what you need in that occasion is to sort of uh, reprogram your brain because you're about to do something different. So if you don't set yourself 
up to success with some tools or even tricks like this, you know, word of the year, then you're going to have a hard time really going at it throughout the year. You know, maybe in the beginning, right? Like in January, February, maybe even in March, you might still, you know, get fired up about your goals. But as time goes on, you know what happens. So yeah, this is one of the ways, there are other things you can do, but this is one of the ways to sort of rewire or reprogram your brain so that you get to sort of start thinking in different ways. Hmm. Yeah, I love that. And I think, you know, there's always um, little hacks, right, that we yeah. have to look at because I personally done this myself. I know a lot of people in my sphere do this. They set the same goals over and over and over again, and yet they don't get done, right? You're ending the year and thinking like, wow, I didn't get any of those goals, especially the bigger, bolder goals done. Oh yeah. I've been there. <laughs> I think we all <laughs> have, right? So yeah. how does having a word of the year help someone achieve those bigger, bolder, maybe even scarier goals that someone's setting for their business? So I have, you know, about five different reasons for anyone to come up with, you know, the word of the year, um, just to help you achieve those goals. And the main thing is that that word of the year, whatever you pick, will act as discouragement slash encouragement meaning at times when you're say, having a hard time keeping up with your goals then that word will act as an encouragement right you get fired up again or you get inspired again by thinking about that particular word that you picked or at times it can also act as discouragement and i'll give you an example so this year, my word of the year was refinement um, because I tend to, just like any other entrepreneurs, <laughs> I did time to time, I get this shiny object syndrome. And, uh, you know, there are some new things that come up and I wanted to experiment. And I would, you know, revert back to my word of the year, refinement. And it does stop me from doing something that may not be aligned with that word of the year or some of the goals that I have because that word of refinement, when I think of it, I ask myself a few different questions like, is this anything to do with refining my process or refining my business? And I know the answer, you know, and I give myself a a pause and think about it. And there are many occasions this year that I made conscious decisions not to do something because of my word of the year. It becomes a focusing tool for you. Oh, absolutely. And it also sets the right tone for the year if that's what you want to achieve whatever the word you come up with. So in my case, it was refinement. And I thought that that was really crucial for my business um, because the year before I was in this uh, a bit of a experimentation phase and I've learned quite a bit and nothing was waste, but this year I wanted to refine it. So I used that as sort of like a, a, a check, you know, um, check myself word in a sense so time to time every time i have to make any business decisions i would think of that word i think one of the things that happens for people is they i get, they get the idea that they're supposed to have a, a word or a theme right mm -hmm. but there's this, all this pressure <laughs> you know it's like oh my god it's very <laughs> i need to pick my word Right. You know, like, how can someone go about letting this word emerge for them so that it is aligning for them? So it is um, helping them focus and, and, it, and it has meaning beyond just the exercise itself. 
That's a good question. So I, I do have this three-step process, which is fairly easy to do. So you don't have to panic. The first place that you wanted to start from would be to just not worry about those things, you know, that you have to come up with this perfect word or it needs to do this and that. You don't have to worry about any of that. First, you just write them all down. Whatever comes up to your mind, open yourself up and just freely write them down. And you don't have to, you know, do this in one setting. You can do this throughout the week, for example. You know, if uh, you're listening to this in January, then maybe you use that month just to be intentional about those words and let them come to you and you write them down freely. Then you can take a look at it. That would be the step two. Um, you look at them and see if any of them would jump out. And you might want to think, why? Like, why am I so obsessed over? I mean, that was my process, right? Um, why am I so obsessed over some of the words? And what do they mean to me? You know, mean to my life and mean to my business. And you dig a little deeper as a step number two. Then you narrow it down and you just pick one and there's no right or wrong way to do this so don't get all worked up about it yeah i think that's the key is knowing that this is not like a permanent like tattoo you're getting on your body <laughs> it's a word that's okay. meant to kind of elicit as you said earlier like inspiration and motivation it's meant to keep you connected to something that you want to emerge for that year and um, how do you keep your word of the year relevant and, and in front of you? I'm just kind of curious, like if you have a little quick, kind of fun ways to keep that word fresh in front of you. Oh, absolutely. Many ways. So, uh, for example, like I, and, and you, know, you can do it in many different ways. You, um, you can save your word of the year as a screensaver. Um, I do that on my phone. So it doesn't have to be on your laptop, but it could be. Right. So um, say like you can use something like a Canva or something you know, easy to um, uh, come up with a little graphic with that word in the middle of it. And you can save it on your phone or something so that every time you touch your phone, which probably would be like hundreds of times throughout the day, <laughs> the first thing that you would see is that word and subconsciously you start to think more about it and what you can do based on the word that you picked so that's one of the ways to do this and also um, if you like journaling um, i'm not an avid journal journal person but uh, um, i start my day with that word so yes you have to be somewhat intentional and to to stick with it throughout the year but it's not so hard so let's say when you wake up and you may have your own morning rituals and you can incorporate that into it so maybe like if you sit down and have some quiet time when you're having a cup of coffee for the first 10 or 15 minutes or so um you may want to start your thinking process from that word and see how you want to design your day based on that hmm. So I always have a word of the year as well. And one of the things I started doing, and I have to um, give a shout out to my um, good friend, Lynn Rose, for kind of being a catalyst for this for me is uh, I oftentimes will paint them on uh, one of those bigger black flat rocks. Ooh, and then it's nice. like my paperweight, right? It's like on my desk yeah. with me. And she did this for me a few years ago when we had a little New Year's celebration. And then I did it with my clients this year in the mastermind retreat. And so now I have my little collection of rocks. And so like, it's kind of fun because then I can look back and go, wow, like the, this was the evolution of me through the rocks that I've, you know, painted or, you know, set up as my, my word. But my word for 2019 was strong. Uh -huh. So that was the word I was with because I wanted to remember, because I've dealt with some health issues over the last few years. First of all, it was right. like a, a, a reminder for me that I'm becoming stronger and stronger every day. But it was also like one of the things I bump up against because I'm one of those like supporters by nature, you know, and I, I have that people pleasing part of me. Sometimes my boundaries get a little collapsed. So part of it was to also remind me the different places that it's okay to be strong in business 
and still be me. So that was, that was my word for 2019. I love that idea. And, you know, so it could be a rock that you paint on, as you said, I think that's a a really fun idea and you get to keep them. So as you said, you can see your own evolution, you know, with your um, words each year, which is fantastic. Um, You could, you know, if you're crafty or if you, our friends are somewhat crafty maybe they can make you a bracelet or 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 something so you can really turn this into a fun thing so that you don't feel like you know uh, you're doing this for uh, some business reasons like you wanted to have fun with it and also uh, what i really liked about what you said was that that there's this uh, emotional aspect to the word that you pick unlike goals you can really be yourself you know freely emotionally and you know um as a strategist i tend to be somewhat strategic logical and rational when i give out my advice uh, um, to my clients or my audience but at times that's not enough to work it out. And, yeah. and you really have to reconnect yourself with who you are naturally, you know, emotionally to align yourself with your business. I think um, um, you might have some pointers on that, but I truly believe in it. And so when it comes to picking your word of the year, you might want to give a thought on that to make sure that the, um, the word is inspiring and uh, something that you look forward to instead of something that you have to do or you should do. Yeah. So what I think I'm hearing you say, and I'm really glad you're covering this, is it's not like an away from word. It's not something you want to stop doing. It's like, it's not like, don't do this. (laughs) It's what do you want more of? Like, what do you want to lean into? What do you want like to like have as an inspiration for you? Because sometimes people they start picking words that remind them who they don't want to be. (laughs) I think, you know, that kind of works against your subconscious mind a little bit. Exactly. And like I said in the beginning, I mean, what you wanted to do with this, you know, this exercise is to reprogram your brain so you would think differently. And just as I said, you know, as an example, my word of the year um, was, the the previous one was refinement. So I'm not used to think that way, but this year, this current year, I gave plenty of time thinking about how to refine things. And every time I thought about it, I didn't feel heavy. Um, I actually got inspired to think, yeah, no, that's who I wanted to become. You know, I want things to be refined and, and, and I want things to work instead of having all sorts of things scattered around and, and not in particular order. I really wanted to take a good look at my business and uh, it, didn't, it didn't drag me, you know, down in any way at all. You know, it, I think it was a really uplifting word for me. And that's the reason why that I was you know, able to pull through, even when things got a little, say, tough in, in mid-year, because that's what happens. Nobody remembers um, his or her New Year's resolution in July, right? Right, exactly. Although I guess you could find that there, you know, like, if you had a word of the year and all of a sudden you felt like it wasn't your word of the year anymore, like can someone shift their year? I mean, their word like midstream. <laughs> oh my God. Of course. Cause there is no word of the year. Police knocking on your door. <laughs> so no one's getting arrested for changing their word. There's no, no, no bad things are happening. It's like trusting yourself that you can evolve like your focus and, and maybe there's something that's emerging that, that we're like, like you could give yourself the gift to let that word like evolve with you throughout the year. Oh, absolutely. And who knows, because of the fact that, you know, uh, you give this a try and start with one word of the year. And because of it, you ended up achieving your goals, say in four months. 
And what, you know, who's to stop you from coming up with another one to maybe take another step? So yeah, that's a that. very good question. Yeah. So um, I know you have a little worksheet that, not little, but you have a worksheet that you've put together to help people really uncover a powerful word. Uh, do you want to share with people where they can find it and what it's going to help them do? Oh, absolutely. So I have this worksheet that pretty much outlines the three steps that we covered today and uh, it makes it easier for you to just print it out. So it's going to be downloadable and you can just print it out so that you can get started with it. That will help you to, you know, um, brain dump your word of the year first and you can narrow it down to one so you can find that at my website which is my name michaelsakai.com it's spelled m-a-i-k-o-s-a-k-a-i.com forward slash word so w-o-r-d and I will link that up in the show notes just in case you're scrambling for a pen or you're like, wait, how did she spell her name again? We'll make it super simple in the show notes at Amplify Your Success Podcast. Just look for today's episode. Uh, I want to kind of like circle back to how you um, can like, like think of it like little octopus tentacles. Like what are all the tips you have for making the most of your theme for the year? Um, so the, you know, the, obviously the first thing that you have to do is to get real int intentional about the word that, you know, you, you eventually pick and by using all the tips that we shared today in terms of making sure that the, uh, your word of the year is visible so that the, you have this touch point throughout the day to think about the word and um, a, every decision that you need to make, that you would think of the word throughout the year. So that's the, that's the basic uh, part of it. So if you do that, you're like, you know, um, uh, halfway there. And after that, if you feel like you're a little bit off the mark, don't punish yourself for it. You know, you don't really need to shame yourself. You do want to take some time to think about why you came up with, you know, um, with this word to begin with and where the disconnect is and how to bridge the gap. You can think about this a little more throughout the year so that, uh, you know, um, you can set your goals maybe differently. Maybe you have to adjust your goals accordingly or vice versa. You get to think about this a little bit more. Um, so that's, that's another way to, you know, sort of use the word of the year effectively. And once you start to get used to the idea of thinking about this word as a theme for the new year, then you will be surprised that to know that, that it actually has more effect, not just uh, on your business life, but on your personal life as well, because you think so much of it and what you want it to happen. And most likely it's going to happen is that you're going to improve your business as well as your life. Yeah. And I would just add one little thing, because this is my little twist on things is what if you went through the year um, looking for the signs and collecting evidence of all the ways your word or your theme are happening. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And Cause I think sometimes we, especially as entrepreneurs and high achievers, oftentimes we're really hard on ourselves and we make these big lists of goals and you know, we didn't achieve half of what we thought we would, but yet we don't pay attention to the things that did happen. Like the things that surprised us or came about that, that, created these unexpected amazingness moments right so that what if you so true. yeah like let's let's like set people off in this intention to collect all the evidence of ways that it could have been uh you know that it is coming about rather than the ways that maybe you don't uh step into it even though you wanted to okay so i have to ask you yep have you picked your word for 2020 yet yes i have do you want to share it Oh, absolutely. So this one, I took my time to figure that out a little bit because it had a, a 
real strong contender. <laughs> so, and I want everybody to know that that does happen. You know, sometimes you have, say, like a two or three really good ones that you think and it, it's hard to pick. But anyway, the word of the year for 2020 for me is limitless. Mm. But I, I wanted to make sure that the people don't misunderstand um, uh, my interpretation of the word limitless, though. You know, when uh, I mean, there, it has many different sort of uh, meanings and purposes when it comes to that word. I don't really mean it to be, you know, uh, working harder and longer because I'm invincible and limitless. You know, that's not the way, uh, that's not the reason that I picked it. It's more so that I wanted to expand my mind limitlessly. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much about, you know, putting more hours or uh, working harder and to be the solution. Instead, how can I um, open up my mind limitlessly to look at things differently or think of uh, things differently? And I really wanted to push the boundary and, you know, uh, push the envelope, so to speak, um, intentionally. I think we all do this as you know entrepreneurs uh, time to time because we you know we need to be creative with our businesses and all that but i want it to be more intentional about it i love it so my word is expansiveness Ooh, it's a little similar uh-huh i know <laughs> <laughs> and I, instead of saying expansion the reason i went with expansiveness is mm -hmm. because and expansive would be a shorter version of that um, is that I believe that we often say yes to things because we think we should do them instead of doing what really feels expansive. So I've been retraining my, my own, uh, willfulness, you know, that logical, practical part of me to do what I think I should do and to really choose the things that feel expansive as well as holding space for people to be more expansive in their own approach to business so it's kind of like a the theme i'm holding for my clients the theme i'm holding for me the theme i'm holding for my team this year so mm -hmm. that's my word oh i love that and i i love the reason behind it you know the, the one thing is that you want to be very clear on why you're picking that word and just because it sounds cool or it sounds you know motivating um you wanted to dig deeper than that just as you described you know then they all make sense and and now you 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 know you come full circle with that word why you want it to be you know your word of the year and i have my reasons as well so yeah this is very exciting <laughs> well i'm going to be uh encouraging our community uh, especially if you're in the amplifier success community which is my free community to pick your theme and share it like pick your word and i know like miko can uh join us in that conversation she's also going to be a part of the amplifier success community so we'll um we'll create some dialogue about that there make sure you get her downloadable worksheet to help you create this because again if you have some you're torn about some of the words that you might pick or you'd like to kind of go through a process and really go into a deeper place to pick this word and then uh see the different ways your your word can play out for you i know her worksheet will help you go through that process and um, I will put the URL in the show notes so you have it handy to get that. Uh, Miko, as we wrap up, is there any last words you'd like to share that um, might inspire someone to connect their theme this year to bigger, bolder, scary, scary big goals? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think this is one of the rare occasions where we get to have fun with the process. Um, you know, in our business, as it, a lot of times we only think about what we need to do or we should accomplish and what we should finish, all those things. But we all need some business activities that are closely tied to our heart, you know, um, why we do what we do, what's our bigger vision, what's our bigger mission. And if you can condense all of that down to one word, 
and let it be your reminder throughout the year, then you will notice the difference that you're making you know, uh, during the year. And as you said, Melanie, I think it was great advice about really documenting and you know, reminding yourself some of the evidence that you're going to collect from this activity. And I think that is so vital that we take a moment time to time to really, you know, give ourselves some credit, you know, um, because you're right, we don't do that often because we're high achievers. And that happens to many of us, but we do have to, you know, acknowledge what we have accomplished based on your word of the year, my word of the year. And I'm really excited that um, I got to share this with you and your audience today. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. And as you're listening in, um, I would love to hear what your word's going to be about. So come on, join us in the Amplifier Success community. It's free at amplifiersuccesscommunity.com and uh, share what your word's going to be. And if you're catching this later, you can still share what your word's going to be. So uh, it's always fun to revisit that throughout the year and see, are you really living into it? So We'll see you guys all next week. Thank you. This is Melanie Benson, your host. Thanks so much for listening in today. If you want to catch up on any of the show notes and circle back on any of the resources we shared in today's show, head on over to the show page at AmplifyYourSuccessPodcast.com. And remember, you amplify your results faster when you're in a community of other people who are moving and shaking. Join us at AmplifyYourSuccessCommunity.com. One last thing, when you've gained insight from today's episode, help us share that and inspire other people by heading over to iTunes, subscribing, and give it a review. iTunes absolutely loves seeing these reviews pop up, and it actually helps boost my show's visibility. So I would be super grateful for your reviews. And as always, I love seeing your shares of these episodes on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Come find me over there. Tag me in your shares. I'll give you some social media love right back. So see you next week for another inspiring episode of Amplify Your Success Podcast.